Let's get you some exclusive voice. My colleague Ruchi Bacha is in conversation with Airbnb's co-founder and chief strategy officer Nathan Blekarczyk. He talks about the domestic growth of the company and also about the Indian market. Let's listen in. Nathan, thanks for taking your time out and speaking to us at DT Now. Let me first begin by uh, talking about the conversation that I had with Brian Chesky last year when he was in India. And he talked about how 2018, 2017 and 2018 were great years for Airbnb. Uh, both inbound and outbound uh, markets grew by almost 200%. Uh, what does 2019 really hold for Airbnb? Well, what we're seeing is uh, a real growth in the domestic market now. Um, so we have now 45,000 listings across India. Uh, Goa being a very popular destination with about 6,000 there alone. And uh, we've seen domestic market grow about 78% uh, in the last year. Uh, and we see it becoming a bigger and bigger part of our business in India. Um, within domestic, what we're seeing is business travel uh, really take off. There's now 6,500 Indian companies uh, that are booking business travel directly with Airbnb, uh, and that's grown 4x uh, over the last year. So 45,000 listings that we're talking about, uh, almost it's, it's like 100% uh, growth if I'm not wrong. But is that pace somewhat difficult to sustain or do you believe that this is just going to go like one way which is upwards? No, I think, I, I think this can be sustained for some period of time. I mean, the, India is a huge market. And so I, I think, um, you know, in other countries, uh, the more mature countries where, you know, U.S., Europe, you know, we're in the double digit kind of level of penetration. Um, and so I think that's possible here in India, too. Uh, it's still relatively early days. Uh, the company's 10 and a half years old, but in India, we've only really been here two and a half years. Um, but I think what we have now is a strong foundation. We have good momentum, and I expect this to play out um, for many years of high growth. So uh, the last time I was speaking to Brian, uh, he told me how India figures in the top five countries across uh, the globe uh, for Airbnb. Uh, going forward, uh, what kind of interactions are you kind of looking to have with the government, with the state governments? I know you're closely involved with some of the state governments uh, uh, and are looking to uh, uh, expand in a big way on that front. Uh, what, does, uh, you know, what should one really expect in the days to come? Yeah. So in the earlier days, we were really focused on partnerships to really show how the business model could be applied to kind of the local needs. And, and to that end, we've done a number of partnerships with, um, you know, women entrepreneurs. Yeah. Uh, we made a commitment last year, Brian made a commitment to help train 50,000 hospitality entrepreneurs. And typically these are folks in rural areas that don't normally benefit from tourism. Um, and so, so that has been what we have done and it's been very successful. Um, you know, as Airbnb comes to scale, it starts to bring questions up around regulation and, hmm. you know, what should be the regulation for this new economy? And those are conversations we've been through in other countries. Now we've seen uh, about 200 different municipalities and countries around the world pass home sharing regulation. And I think, you know, this is just a sign of success. Of course, with scale and success, there should be rules and, and, and we welcome that. Uh, our approach to that has always been to be a partner uh, and to be proactive. Uh, and so we welcome dialogue uh, throughout India on this matter. You know, in fact, uh, great that you've uh, talked about uh, the issue of home sharing because in India we, st we don't have regulations on home sharing so far. Uh, the government is actively now looking at this space. Uh, uh, but, you know, when you're saying we're open to dialogue, uh, you know, what kind of regulations would you, would you uh, be, be looking at, would you be okay with? So uh, we have a lot of experience in this area now uh, since we've uh, had this conversation uh, in, in different places and, and we've seen many different models implemented. Mm -hmm. I think what's important um, is that you still make it possible for um, lots of people to participate. Because remember, who's participating on the other end, meaning the hosts? Who are the hosts? The hosts are ordinary people. Right. That means, um, you know, they, they aren't necessarily familiar with how to do these things. If you make it too difficult to get through the regulation process, then they simply won't join this new economy yeah. to begin with. So where we've seen a lot of success is where there's kind of low friction up front. Um, of course, you know, what governments uh, care a lot about is uh, having understanding of, um, you know, how is security handled, yeah, exactly. you know, how is consumer protection done. Um, and there, uh, you know, I think we have a bunch of things built into the system. Um, as well as we can implement uh, more things based on government input. Right. Let me also ask you on the, you know, the, the micro and the macro trends that will be shaping up 
this space in the days to come, especially the home sharing bit, because in India we don't have regulations so far. This is coming up in a huge way now. You're also talking about 45,000 odd listings that Airbnb has, but the micro trends and the macro trends that will be shaping up uh, the space. Yeah, well, I think the macro trend is India is a uh, huge country, uh, growing middle class, huge population of millennials, uh, and that's really a sweet spot for Airbnb and for travel as a whole. Uh, in terms of the middle class. Uh, so I think that's why we've been investing in India the last couple of years and we'll continue to do so. We see that as a huge opportunity. Um, and then I think that is going to filter out into all the different segments of travel. So whether that be business travel um, or now us bringing our experiences product uh, to India. I want to ask you how uh is the Indian market different from the markets abroad or, or you know what kind of learnings do you have from the Indian market? Um, what we have as learnings that I think we're seeing be true here as well is just kind of the sequencing of, of how um, Airbnb takes hold in a market. Um, you know, it requires a lot of trust. And so the early kind of use cases, you know, Indians using Airbnb to travel the world. Airbnb has 5 million homes, 191 countries, so that's a great use case. But once uh, you're comfortable doing that, then you ask yourself, well, maybe I can use this domestically as well. And so that's what's happening right now is we're seeing uh, a huge growth in domestic travel. Um, you know, from there you start to see the businesses take interest. And so there's a sequence of progression. Um, and as home sharing becomes popular, it, it becomes uh, a jumping off point to new opportunities. Uh, and that's why we launched experiences here. We now have that in New Delhi and in Goa. Uh, and there's about 100 experiences on the platform. So 45,000 listings, 100 experiences, but you know, I also have to ask you, uh, while Airbnb has picked up in a huge way in India, it also sees a huge amount of competitions from budget hotels, especially like OYO rooms. How are you looking to take on competition? Does that really bother you? Is that something that you're actively looking at? We don't really think about that as competition, to be honest, because uh, what we do is so different than those other companies. I mean, those companies, as you mentioned, are focused on discounting, etc. Now, on Airbnb, you can find great values, to be sure. Sure. But I think what really sets us apart is our focus on uh, local experiences and that kind of people-to-people -people interaction. Um, and so that's what our brand stands for. That's why people come to Airbnb. Um, and there really aren't significant players with that kind of model. Um, I also think travel is a huge industry. So there's room for different approaches and, and room for people to self-select. But this is what we do. And we've seen it now um, become popularized in countries around the world. And I'm sure that we have a positive future here in India too. Absolutely. Let me also uh, you know, touch upon another important issue. Uh, last time when I was uh, speaking to uh, Brian, he said, uh, I'm, I will not rule out an IPO for Airbnb anytime soon. Is that something that's very much on cards? We will see sometime uh, you know, in, in this year or maybe the next one? Yeah, well, we're still definitely not ruling it out. <laughs> um, of course, we, we're not giving guidance on exact timing, uh, but what we've said is that you know, we're technically ready. Um, uh, you know, we've been very deliberate about how we approach this. The company has been profitable the last two years. Um, and so we don't need to do this for financial reasons. Um, you know, that being said, uh, we're already running the company as if it's a public company internally at least. Um, and so it is something that will happen in the future. You know, since we were talking about uh, uh, policy making generally, uh, we saw uh, a lot of developments happen in Japan which affected almost 80% of uh, your listings. How uh, important is policy clarity? And every time there's policy ambiguity, what kind of challenges uh, uh, you know, do you really see? Yeah, well, I think you know, the, the policy ambiguity is really a disservice to the hosts and those who want to participate in this ecosystem uh, because you know, nobody wants to break the rules, and, and, but people are looking for clarity. And there just isn't that today um, because this is a new model. Uh, now, I think when regulation does get passed, um, you know, we've seen a lot of different models. Um, what happened in Japan was a little bit unfortunate, to be honest. Um, actually, at the national level, the government really wants to see home sharing succeed. They really want as many people to participate as possible because they're thinking about the Olympics in 2020. Right. And they know that they don't have enough hotels for all the visitors who are going to come. And so they see home sharing as part of the solution. Now, what happened was when their legislation got crafted, um, at the local level, a lot of additional requirements were added in. Some of those requirements, frankly, weren't 
uh, practical. One such requirement in, in, in one town is that you have to have like uh, actual schematics of your house drawn professionally and submitted. Well, nobody wants to spend $600 to have those schematics drawn up as a prerequisite for taking your first booking. So that's an example of a high friction process um, and one that we think is not practical. That being said, we think you know, basic safety requirements and such make a ton of sense. You know, in India, we since we were talking about that there are no regulations, no rules so far. I mean, do you fear that because India has has had a huge history of policy ambiguity that has that has hurt companies in a big way? Is that some some bit of you know of a worrisome area for you as well? Um, yeah, I think in the meantime we've been doing. We're very happy uh, with our growth and success, and of course. Um, you know, there's a lot of self-regulation we impose upon ourselves mm -hmm. because, uh, you know, we take responsibility for the customer experience and our brand, of course. Um, and so, uh, you know, that means we want to make sure customers are happy. You know, after every stay, the guest reviews the host, the host reviews the guest. Mm -hmm. If a host is not performing, not yeah. receiving positive reviews, we remove them from the platform. So there's a lot of things we're doing to make sure that, uh, you know, everybody in the equation uh, is being taken care of care of. That being said, we're happy to also take into account, you know, additional requests uh, that government may have and, and, and get those implemented as well. 